Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 2008 Da Vinci-esque mystery drama film called The Oxford Murders. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. Soldiers are running through the trenches during the Great War. They spot a man writing in a notebook during the shelling. Professor Arthur Seldom explains that he had to write his notes when his mind dictated it couldn't be put off. The book was published and became the most influential philosophical book of the 20th century. Martin is riding the train and opens Seldom's book. He enters a house and meets the owner, Mrs. Eagleton. They chat about her husband and his relationship with Seldom. She seems impressed by his research and Martin explains that he is here because of Seldom. Mrs. Eagleton's daughter, Beth, walks in and Martin introduces himself as their new overseas lodger. Later, they dine together and the mother and daughter engage in a very passive-aggressive conversation regarding Beth's relationship status. Beth leaves to perform a cello recital and Mrs. Eagleton offers Martin a game of Scrabble. The next day at the university, Martin is shown to his study. He hopes that Professor Seldom will be the supervisor for his thesis, but he is told that Seldom only works as a researcher. Later, Martin is playing squash when he meets a nurse named Lorna. They play together and it is evident that he fancies her. She drops him off at home and they arrange to play again soon. Beth is watching them from the window. She confronts him at the door about his intentions and accuses him of trying to use her mother to gain access to Seldom. She later interrupts him in the shower to tell him that Seldom is giving a lecture soon and it is his chance to meet him. At the lecture, Martin raises his hand and makes a statement. Seldom puts him down and humiliates him in front of the other attendees. He mocks the idea that if a butterfly flaps its wings, that there is a hurricane on the other side of the world. Back in his study, Martin angrily packs his bags and meets Yuri, an overseas student that shares his study. Martin explains that he is leaving, but pauses when Yuri says that he hopes it is not because of Seldom. Yuri appears to loathe Seldom and says that he is now only interested in selling books. Martin returns home and meets Seldom on the doorstep. He explains that he is there to visit an old friend. They both apologize for their respective behavior during the lecture and enter the house. There, they discover Mrs. Eagleton's dead body. It appears that she was playing a game of Scrabble when she died. Martin is being interviewed by Inspector Peterson and he explains that it was a coincidence when he and Seldom discovered the body together. Martin explains this was the first time they had met, except at the conference earlier that day. During his interview, Seldom explains that he was at the house because the murderer told him to go there. He received a note during the conference saying, the first of the series, followed by Mrs. Eagleton's address and the time. He explains that in his book, he compares logical theories with serial murders and has received many crazy notes since. He threw the note in a trash can in the street and a detective named Scott is sent to find the note. Seldom tells them that there was a perfectly hand-drawn circle beneath the text. He thinks that it is a symbol, the first element of a logical sequence. After their interview, the detective is struggling to see a connection between the murder and the symbols. Seldom explains that in the book, he postulates that murder committed for intellectual reasons does not exist in the real world. The behavior of serial killers can be analyzed psychologically, not logically. He thinks that the murderer wants to prove that he is more intelligent. Afterwards, Seldom tells Martin that due to Mrs. Eagleton's cancer, she would have died soon anyway. Martin speculates that this is why the killer chose her. On an intellectual level, he is not interested in the death itself. Seldom says that the murderer could have found out about her condition at St. Joseph's Hospital had her nose not been accidentally broken whilst the killer tried to suffocate her. Then, it would have looked like natural causes and the police wouldn't have got involved. The police arrive to speak with Beth, but seldom insist on breaking the news to her himself. As Martin watches from the gallery, a member of the orchestra begins to cough. Beth tells Martin that she was interrogated for two hours and feels that she is the chief suspect. She also reveals to him that she is relieved that her mother is dead as she can now regain her life. He comforts her. She tries to turn it into something more, but as he breaks off, she goes away embarrassed. The following day, Yuri congratulates Martin for getting his name in the paper alongside Seldom and teases that Martin murdered Mrs. Eagleton to attract his attention. 
Martin goes to meet Seldom in the pub. Seldom tells Martin that they can never be sure to have all the facts, and the one fact that is missing may alter the outcome. It seems that Scott was unable to find the note. Because of that, Beth will be determined to be guilty. Later, whilst playing squash with Lorna, he tells her that despite the circumstance, he is happy to be spending time with Seldom. At her house, she reveals that she knows Seldom as he visits a terminal patient every day. Martin follows Seldom to the hospital for his daily visit. As Martin sits in the waiting room, he talks with a seemingly crazy man named Frank. Lorna arrives to tell Frank that he can go in to see his daughter now. She explains to Martin that Frank's daughter needs a transplant and that the only two compatible donors refused. He considered donating his own lungs. Martin finds Seldom with the patient, who he tells was one of his most brilliant students named Coleman. He designed some tests and determined that although some of the answers given seemed absurd, they were perfectly valid solutions, only with an infinitely more complex justification. The intelligence of these pupils was more far-reaching. He realized that any sequence of numbers could be justified depending on how complicated the rule is. This realization prompted him to go to a hospital and administer the same test to patients with mental illnesses. Their results correlated with the results from the highly gifted students. He couldn't understand this, but realized that he saw everything from the outside. To understand the symbols, he needed to look at them from the inside. The only way to achieve this was to perform surgery on his own brain. Now, lying in the hospital bed, Kalman describes four letters over and over. They are a woman's name. In the library, Beth finds Martin and asks where he was last night. She causes a scene and accuses him of humiliating her. She storms out and he gives chase. He bumps into Yuri, who asks if he has found his killer yet. Martin then finds a note on the door with the symbol and the words, 14 colon 15. St. Joseph's Hospital. He calls Lorna and tells her that Coleman was murdered at 1415. She rushes the check, but everything is normal. Martin wonders who could be the victim. In the morgue, Peterson, Seldom, and Martin examine the body of the man from the orchestra. Peterson notes that his death would appear natural if they hadn't noticed a mark from an intravenous injection, as he wasn't receiving that kind of treatment. They then try to decipher the sequence of the symbols, but they cannot. Peterson summarizes by saying that there is going to be another murder because they can't solve this puzzle. That evening, Martin and Seldom meet outside a restaurant. Lorna has invited them both to dinner, and it is revealed that she has had a prior relationship with Seldom. She tells them that there was no toxin in the victim's blood. Seldom reveals to Martin that he knows what the third symbol is and writes it on a folded napkin. He gives him the option of looking at it now or working it out for himself and proving to him that he is not an idiot. Martin goes to watch Beth playing in the orchestra. She tells him that her last concert will be on Guy Fox night and he promises to attend. She admits to him that she may have elaborated on a few details during her interview with Peterson and it may incriminate him. He goes to see Lorna and shares his worries that he is now the chief suspect. It turns into an argument as Martin is jealous that he may be sharing Lorna with Seldom. Martin goes to drink with Yuri. Yuri is upset that there will soon be a presentation of the solution of a theorem that he deduced was stolen by Seldom. Martin takes him back to his room and finds a picture of Yuri with Seldom and a card for the guy Fox party. Martin goes to the party and meets Seldom. Seldom reveals that he has been being followed by Scott for days. As the performance begins, Martin sees Yuri with something hidden under his cape. He alerts the inspector and they give chase. They catch him and discover that it was just a protest sign. Peterson seems annoyed that Scott is no longer watching Seldom. At the end of the performance, another member of the orchestra starts to cough and collapses. In the car, the inspector reveals that the third symbol, a triangle, was discovered on the conductor's stand. The inspector demands that Seldom tell him everything he knows but Seldom indicates that perhaps now is not the best time. Martin takes the hint and gets out. The next day, on the way to the mathematical presentation, Seldom apologizes to Martin and tells him that he doesn't want him to stop thinking. He tells him that the fourth symbol is going to be revealed in the papers, and hopefully the murderer will think that Seldom recognizes his intelligence and stop the murders. As they pass by the hospital, Martin jumps off the bus and goes to meet Lorna. Whilst he is with her, he starts to figure out the next symbol in the sequence. 
They rush to the bookstore and find a book that contains the first three symbols as well as the fourth. It concerns Pythagoras, and Lorna also knows that Pythagorean medics also attempted transplant. Martin remembers Frank from the hospital, the police station. Scott appears unconcerned by this news, as the killer has already contacted them and told them to send ambulances to a particular place. They will try to intercept the bus before it reaches them. The police stop a bus that is carrying Seldom and the other mathematicians, and Scott tells Martin that they are all safe. Martin argues that they have got the wrong bus. Frank is driving a bus for children with mental illnesses. Martin calls Seldom, urging him to get Peterson to stop the other bus. Seldom watches the other bus drive past, but is unable to get to Peterson in time. The other bus crashes and bursts in the flames. Martin and Lorna arrive soon after, and Peterson reveals that five of the victims are possible donors. The driver meant to jump out before the crash, but he miscalculated and perished in the fire. Soon after, Martin is returning to America with Lorna. Inside his passport, he finds the napkin from Seldom. It is blank. It appears that Seldom didn't know the third symbol himself. Martin unpacks the crime photographs from his luggage and notices that Mrs. Eagleton's Scrabble letters spelt out circle in German. Lorna walks away. Martin goes to meet Seldom in the museum. He confronts him with the truth that there was no serial killer. It was Seldom's invention to disguise the only real crime, the death of Mrs. Eagleton. Beth killed her and then asked Seldom for his help. At Mrs. Eagleton, he saw the German word for circle on the Scrabble tiles, concocted a plan on the spot. He needed a second death to convince the police that the killer wasn't Beth. When occasions presented themselves, he would leave the symbols. Frank read the article in the paper and realized that it was a solution to his problem as well. Every day, he drives those kids with healthy lungs, but damaged minds. Why should they get to live when his daughter doesn't? Martin accuses Seldom of provoking the deaths of those innocent children. He is about to walk away when Seldom tells Martin that he is the real culprit for the murders. Beth was in love with him, and when he told her that he tries to be happy and she should try it, she understood that she should be free like he is. She killed her mother, which was the one thing preventing her from being free. The butterfly that flutters its wings and causes a hurricane on the other side of the world. Is Martin that butterfly? Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notification. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.